Yes, sir. Well, good evening. We want to welcome you tonight to Safe Harbor and as our mercies of God. It's great to see each and every one of you tonight. And we are excited about what's going to take place tonight. Amen. We are excited that God is, is here and you are in for an absolute treat tonight. We're going to have some awesome anointed praise and worship. And then after the praise and worship, we're going to have some speakers that are just, their testimonies are just fantastic. Um, of love and sickness and the hand of God moving. And then when everybody gave up, God didn't. That was kind of my own take on that. But that's kind of their stories that you're going to hear tonight. And so we want to invite you to just let God have his way in your life tonight, that he can minister to you and that you can gain something tonight. Because, you know, when, when we go into the house of God, we go in and we need to go in expecting to be different than when we can't go out. Amen? We need to expect to be changed, whether it's through music, whether it's through a testimony, whatever it is. So we want you to worship tonight freely, and we are just so excited. We want to welcome all of our other pastors from other areas, and uh, just thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Safe Harbor, for being here. Would you stand as we go to the Lord in prayer as we get ready to worship the Lord tonight? Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you do and all that you are. We, we come before you tonight, God, just expecting a mighty move of God. And Father, we're here tonight to exalt your name, the name that is above all names. And so we lift up the, the worship tonight, God, that it would be worship to you as it would be an audience of one as, as we worship corporately and together, Father, to just 
uh, go before you and to go before the throne of God. And Father, for those who are presenting, we pray for those as they give their testimony tonight. And Father, most of all, I, I pray that your Holy Spirit would just indwell upon this place as we receive something tonight. May we receive it and hear it, and then may we take it and apply it to our lives so that we can be changed and be different. And we just give you honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Are you ready to worship? Stay, stay standing and let's worship the Lord. I come to worship as I should. Everything he's done, he's done for my good. My mind is made up and my heart is ready to. I can't wait. the 
Father, we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit and His giving us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that He conquered death. We believe in the resurrection and He's coming back again. Now in Revelations 4, 8, it reads, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. This is just a rehearsal, so you might as well practice in praising God now, because when you get around the throne, that's all you're going to do. Amen. Amen.
my prayer to the Lord is to break me, to mold me, that I want no one but him. Make me broken so I can be healed. Cause I'm so callous, now I can't feel. I want to run to you, we're hard wide open, make me broken. Make me empty, so I can be feel, cause I'm still holding on to my wheel, and I'm completed. When you are with me, make me empty. How many 
hear me song Can I say to the play You wander it's love And beauty so great What would I say If you myself forget who I serve. I forget sometimes that the God I serve walk on the water. Amen. As I kneel down in darkness in the middle of the heavy night, Lord, I pray for sure everything's gonna be alright. Lord, I need a mother battle out in front of me. I'm afraid I won't be able, and I go down in defeat. And he said, do you remember where I brought you from? Take a look behind you and see how far you come. Every time you ask me, didn't I deliver you? So why would you be thinking that I would not see you? Didn't I walk on the water and I come the rage sea? I spoke to the wind, it pushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you call? I walk right beside you Just so you wouldn't fall Didn't I leave all of heaven Just to die for your sin? I searched until I found you And I do it all again Now she's talking to her father in a house that was a home She said my bills are coming due, Lord And six days not that long She hears a voice so still and low Said I moved like that before Can I do this little thing, child? And I give you so much more Did I walk on the water? And I come the rain to see. I spoke to the wind. It pushed and I gave you peace. Didn't I run to your rescue? Didn't I hear you when you called? I'll walk right beside you just so you would fall. Didn't I leave all of heaven? Just to die for your sin I searched until I found you And I do it all again I searched until I found you And I do it all again I searched until I found you And I do 
get on again. Thank you, thank you. I thank God for you coming out to support the mercies of God. The reason why I say support is we all have a testimony Amen. and we all need to share our testimony. However, in this world that we're living in, this modern times, testimonies have become obsolete in a lot of our churches that we do not hear the mercies of God. We don't realize that God is still performing miracles today as he was in the biblical times. And God is present, ever present today as he was then. But we fail to recognize that because we don't hear the testimonies of others. So again, I appreciate you coming and supporting the mercies of God to hear the testimonies for, from two of our presenters and how God is working and has worked in their lives to encourage us, amen? I'd like to share scripture with you. Acts chapter 10, verse 39. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen he was not seen by all the people. He's not recognized by everybody. But he's recognized by those who are looking, seeking him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you seeking God today? Amen? Amen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom, appointed, whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. We have received we can all testify that we have received forgiveness of sin in the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen? It is in that name. Praise God. Hallelujah. We're here to hear the testimonies of presenters tonight who have, they have a relationship with Jesus and how he revealed himself miraculously in their lives at a time when they had nowhere to turn and no one to turn to, but they turned to him Amen. who can do all things but fail. Amen? Amen? I want to invite my first presenter. He's a dear friend of mine. I met him some years ago at the Dismas uh, Charity Halfway House in Portland, uh, Portland part of Louisville, Kentucky. The Lord allowed us to be uh, ministers there to go in and take a ministry to minister to men who have served uh, state time in Kentucky and some local time as well. It's a halfway house preparing them to be released and to go home to their families and regain their rightful position in society because they have served their time. And so God allowed us to, to go to minister to prepare them for that day of release. We, we consider them residents rather than inmates. It's a temporary resident that they are, are living at until the time that they can go home and regain their rightful position as husbands and fathers and uh, join us in the workforce in our community. And we're there to minister to their spirit to prepare them for that day. So Houston is one of those men. But when I met him, come on up brother. When I met him, perhaps three years ago, you might have to pull that away from your mouth a little. When I met him approximately three years ago, he already had a relationship with Jesus and he was well on his way to a new life in Jesus Christ. And I was very impressed with this man. And we became brothers in Christ, yoked up. And we could stand toe to toe and look at each other and we know each other's character. Amen. And we know where we, where we come from. 
where God has brought. We all have a testimony, as I said. If we can identify where God brought us from to where we are this day, this present day. And, and I thank him for his yes and his obedience to be one of the presenters today. Mm. So without further ado, I want to pray for him and allow him to share his testimony with you. Amen. Heavenly Father, as I, I joined with my brother Houston, you brought us into relationships approximately three years ago. Father, we saw e you and each other. We recognize uh, we were brothers in you. And Father, you brought us to this day where he will share his testimony here at Safe Harbor with our communities and our friends. So Father, use him to bring you glory. I pray that he will paint a vivid picture of the life, life that he once lived, but the life that he has now that he lives today in you. How you have elevated him and brought him to a place in time, Father God, that he, he has integrity, he has respect and love for you and love for his fellow man. I thank you for him. Use him again, I pray in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, thank you, Brother TC. First, I'd like to thank God for the opportunity to be here. And uh, I just thank Jesus for what he's done in my life. Uh, thank Brother TC and the church family here for inviting me in. Uh, pray for me. This is only my third time giving a testimony. Uh, and saying that, let's bow our heads and we'll pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to stand here to give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, who hung and died on the cross for me, for the remission of my sins, for the, anyone who believes in him, for the remission of their sins. And Father, we come here for one reason. We pray that the testimony that you gave us will prick the heart of somebody that they would come into a heartfelt relationship with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And that's our whole purpose and our whole goal. And that's why you give us testimonies to share with others uh, that we may bring glory to Christ. And that's our prayer here tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> uh, my name is Houston. I'm a born again believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm going to be reading a verse of scripture out of Hebrews 11, 24 through 26. And as I was preparing for tonight, God always gives me different scriptures because he knows the audience is different everywhere we go. So, and so each time I gave my testimony, he's giving me different verses of scripture. But he gave me this one, and I was really confused. I said, okay, Lord, you're going to have to line this out because I'm really not understanding this. So... Uh, I think they're going to put, yeah, they got it on the board. Thank you. And it reads, by faith, Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. So I said, okay, Lord, I, it's, it's really ain't lining up for me. So, so I prayed on it and prayed on it. And, uh, so, to, so to show you the mercies and the grace of God, I'm going to have to take you through my story. Uh, I'm going to try to do it within a reasonable amount of time. I brought my watch this time. Amen. So I can uh, try to stay on point for the Lord. Uh, so uh, Psalms 51, 5 reads, Behold, I, have, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin, my mother conceived me. Amen? Well, I practice this out pretty good. Uh, but I, verse 24 and 25, when he become of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, uh, God told me that Moses was finding his identity here. And well, how he linked that up with me, I'm going to show you my story. And I was losing my identity as I went along in life. And that's how God lined that scripture up. Uh, Moses was finding his and I was losing mine. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasure of sin. I was just the opposite of Moses. I started enjoying the passing pleasure of sin. So that's, uh, I didn't understand the verse of scripture, but when he started talking to me about it, it started making sense to me. And I said, amen, Lord, you line it out and I'm gonna talk it, amen. So I'm a, uh, I come from a Christian home. Uh, they were born again believers in Jesus Christ. Uh, went to church every Wednesday, uh, twice on Sundays. 
but we was missing something spiritually uh, in the house. We didn't pray together, we didn't read God's word together. And that's a message that God was speaking to me best for another time. So uh, when I got to the age, become of age, like in verse 24 reads, uh, I started my journey as a thief. I wrote, I'm going to try to stay on these cards tonight. Uh, I started my journey as a thief. Uh, I got a bicycle that my mom and dad finally saved up and bought me. And I seen a friend that had a gooseneck pad on there, one of them pads you put on your bicycle, and I wanted one. So my mom and dad allowed us to ride up to the store and cross Highway 60. Was, we wasn't, it was prohibited to go across the road. It was a highway. But they did this one day, and I went there and stole me a bicycle pad, and I got caught. So as my, uh, that's where I started. That's my journey to starting out of sin, the pleasures of sin. So I had to go to court. The judge gave me a little tour of the jail. And you know, everybody thought it was going to scare me, but it didn't. I felt resentment as soon as I walked in the jail. And I said, well, you're not scaring me. And you know, I don't know who you think you are, but you're not scaring me. So anyway, so we went through that little procedure. Then uh, when I turned 13 or 14, it's, uh, I started smoking cigarettes and started rebelling against my family, my parents. And then I was introduced to marijuana, started smoking that pretty heavily. In school, out of school, didn't make no difference. Uh, then, I, then we started drinking. And that led to fighting uh, with whoever, including the police. So, of course, that led to trouble. I was in and out of jail. Uh, first time I got locked up for a numerous amount of months was uh, I stole my mom and dad's truck somewhere around 14 or 15. I was drunk. Me and a good friend of mine, we stole them. My mom and them went out of town. I stole their truck. When they come back, it was gone. They called the police. They didn't know who had it. Uh, they didn't think it was me, of course, because they might not have called. But anyway, they, they caught me. They sent me to a Bowling Green group home. And uh, everybody thought that this might help me, but it made me uh, even more resentful. Uh, now, who do you think you are? So this whole time, I'm starting to, I'm starting to build a, a guard around my heart against authority. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I had a good family. And you know, they loved me, they did the best they could. But I started building some resentment for some reason. And God showed me that in the scripture. I was born into sin. And the devil got good, good things, pleasurable things. Uh, I didn't always get the best things in life and I wanted them. And I was going to any means to get it. And that's what I did. So uh, I got out of Bowling Green Group home. Uh, I, was, I did good in school up to the uh, ninth grade. I almost finished. Uh, the first year of ninth grade, and uh, but I didn't quite make it. I started getting high and drunk, and I didn't make it in ninth grade. I tried two more years after that, and eventually got expelled. Uh, they said I could no longer come back to city school. Sent me to a delinquent school. Uh, I was in delinquent school three times. I got kicked out of that. They said I could never come back. They said you'll do the rest of your time in jail from here on, and that's what I did. In and out of jail, uh, stealing stuff, getting high. Uh, that lifestyle with the, uh, was hooked up with some biker associates and, uh, you know, we just, uh, we thought we were living the dream. We was partying it up, thought we was having a good time. Uh, not knowing that the, uh, the wages of sin is death. And so it's by God's grace and mercy that I can stand here tonight and tell you some of my story. And I thank God for that. <laughs> Amen. Glory to Jesus. So I went to, I took the delinquent school, then I, uh, I turned about 16, I was still being really rebellious, getting worse and worse by the year. And then uh, they sent me to boys camp. The judge said, I'm fed up with you going to boys camp. And I said, whatever, it ain't nothing. I'll go two or three times if you want me to. Lock him up till he goes. And so they locked me up and a couple of days later let me out and uh, until I went to boys camp. And the night before I went, um, me and some buddies, we were partying up, getting drunk, and uh, we had a real bad accident. We flipped four times end over end before we hit the ground in a, in a little bitty uh, Nova car. And it almost killed my best friend. But that still didn't stop me. I got out going to boys camp that time, amen. Uh, but that didn't last long. Just a few months later, I was back in front of the same judge that said he's gonna send me. And he said, well, you're going for sure this time. And I said, oh, but he locked me up and didn't let me out this time. So I went to boys camp, got out, uh, never stopped partying. I thought I was gonna do pretty good. I ended up meeting my kid's wife, uh, mother. She got pregnant with my oldest son. 
And uh, she had him, and I was on, I was really happy to be a dad. I was excited. Uh, got to see him be born. I cut his umbilical cord, and I was really excited. I was going to turn a new leaf, and I did. I got me a job. I never stopped partying or smoking marijuana, but uh, I thought I turned a new leaf, and I started working. And uh, but that didn't last long. A uh, year and a half, a couple years maybe. I was uh, got introduced to methamphetamine which is the biggest root of my sin, other than not believing and walking for God. Uh, and so I, I did a little bit of math back in my younger years, but we never got on it like I did this time. I got introduced to it uh, right at the time that the, uh, my kid's mother got pregnant with my second son. And I got so, this, it's such a, uh, I got such entangled in methamphetamine, that lifestyle, I thought my uh, I thought my youngest son was by somebody else, and I'm shameful to say that I, did, I dropped her off at the hospital to have him, and I didn't. I went in for a brief second, called her mom, said, "You better come up here, cause I'm leaving," and I did. And, and um, <clears throat> shameful, shameful. And God showed me these things. What is his mercy and grace? What he's brought me through? Uh, but anyway, I started running with some guys. We was making methamphetamine. And we was dealing with the biker shop. And we was running. We started. The bike shop got busted in Orangeboro. And we, we packed up all the, uh, the motorcycles and hauled them out west. And that's where we was going out there manufacturing methamphetamine anyway. So... So we was running back and forth out there and staying high, uh, not caring about my kids. I leave my kids with people for months on end uh, to do what I wanted to do. And uh, then I, I was out there in 95 and I got caught with a stolen vehicle that I took out there. I put it in the back of a U-Haul. U-Haul ran out of gas and I got it out of the back of the truck and got caught with it and did six months out there in uh, California. And then I come back and it wasn't, but a few months after I come back to Kentucky, uh, that I did my first prison sentence here in Kentucky. Uh, that was in 95. I went to Murray Adjustment Center, did 44 months on a first degree burglary case. I got out, I was out a year, uh, nine months actually, because I did three months in Oldham County. Uh, for drug possessions, uh, some ingredients to make methamphetamine. And then I uh, went back uh, in 2003, did 38 months, made parole, and was out almost two years. A year and nine months, I believe it was. And then uh, I got locked up again for, uh, they charged me and convicted me with manufacturing and possession of anhydrous ammonia and a PFO-1. They give me two 25-year sentences with the PFO-1, which means I do 25 years with 10 flat years to the board. And so that's what I did. Uh, just got done doing the 10 flat years a little over two years ago. And so, uh, and so I'm going to get to the even better part. I just wanted to run you through a little bit of what God brought me through and kept me from. Uh, his mercy and grace has allowed me to be here, like I said already, but every time I go through my testimony, he shows me a little bit more of how deep his love really was, and he saved me from killing myself or killing someone else. Um, so in 2005, <clears throat> I got really close to my kids before I caught this charge and my family, what I thought was close anyway. Uh, they needed something out there, Johnny, on the spot. We're used to, I wasn't, so to me, I was being a, a pretty, good, pretty good guy here, even though I was still getting high. I was trying to keep some priorities in line here. But I got really close to my kid, and I got locked up. <clears throat> That's what God used uh, to get to my heart was love. Uh, his love, first and foremost, but the love of my mother and my dad and my kids. He allowed me to get really close to them, and it's what broke my heart enough that I would allow Jesus to come into my heart. And so in Psalm 51, 6 reads, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts you will make me to know wisdom. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
You desire truth in the inward parts. In 2005, I got locked up. I went to the county jail, and I took a look at myself. I come to a point in my life where I said, something, something happening here. It ain't the system that's against me like I always thought they was. It ain't nobody. Backup plan. Thank you, Lord. Okay, 2005, um, he used the inward parts of me to get into my heart. I thank God for that because I, uh, I called my mom, picked up a little bitty old Bible, don't know what made me reach up there on top of a TV stand in the jail cell and found and seen this little bit old New Testament, and about this thick, about this big, little brown one. And I called my mom and said, where did I start in this thing? She said, what is it? I said, the Bible. She got quiet for a little spell because she couldn't believe what she was hearing. But she told me what she, what she liked. And so I started off fair, but did I give my uh, heart to Christ? But uh, I didn't know really uh, salvation prayer only needs to be said once, but the devil kept telling me, you're not saved. So I kept saying the salvation prayer over and over and over and over again. But I know the truth now that God forgave me the first time I confessed it. Uh, for not walking for him, amen. But the devil was still trying to conceive, deceive me and lead me astray. But uh, I finally had enough of him. I had enough of myself, uh, first and foremost. And I give my uh, heart to Christ. And I've been on that track ever since. Uh, amen. To Jesus. Uh, not perfect. Uh, still got some hurts, hang-ups and habits, Amen. Um, how many know that God will use a, a messed up person to serve his purpose and his will? Amen. So I'm going to read this uh, verse 26 of Hebrews 11 again. Let's see what time I got. Amen. Esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. Amen. So we stand on some scripture. Last tw 12 years, me, I let Christ into my heart. I think when my mom and dad took me to church, I never remember giving my life to Christ, but I think I had some head knowledge. Amen. And God has led us to uh, start a, uh, a ministry. It's just a Facebook ministry right now. Other than the footwork we do, it's called Relationship Living. And we believe that's what it consists of. You have to have him in your heart and live a relationship for him uh, every day. Amen. <laughs> so that's what we do now. We, uh, Matthew 6, 33, and seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, all his righteousness, and all these things be added to you. Uh, Brother Brad, we go in, we preach that. Uh, another witness, uh, testimony sitting there, a couple of them right there. Amen. Um, but we, uh, so God allowed me to go back in the halfway house uh, a little over a year. After I got out, I was trying to get in there earlier because I was really struggling. Um, some things that I thought I had worked out in the system, in my heart, uh, resurfaced when I got out. Hey Amen. So today, uh, some people may not believe it, but I, I deal with anger issues. Uh, I hold a grudge uh, pretty good. And I, and I battle with a nicotine addiction that I haven't been set free from. But... If God set me free of all them things at once, then I don't guess I need him anymore, amen? But he keeps me holding on, and I keep, I keep on crying out to him for help. So it's what God's doing in our life. We go back into the halfway house, Portland, uh, once a month, I mean once a week on Monday, we do Malachi Dads. It's a vision to uh, help men to come to Christ, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and to help them grow as fathers because our children are suffering. Their children are suffering because the mothers are trying to be a father because the fathers are locked up, and vice versa. They have a women's uh, outfit uh, as well. Uh, I'm drawing, what's the name of it, babe? Huh? No, what's the name of the program they do over there, though? Ruby's for Life. And so we get, we're allowed to go into 
we don't do Ruby for Life, but we're allowed to go in and witness on the church service uh, to the ladies as well on every third Fridays. And that's what God has allowed us to, uh, an ex-convict, an ex-felon, rap sheet's pretty long, about three, three or four pages long, I guess. Um, but that's God's mercy and grace. When you seek him wholeheartedly, he starts opening doors, amen? Amen. Uh, if you've been set free from stuff, you know what I'm talking about. And he'll lead the way. And uh, not only so, not long after that, the pastor of their church has had a vision. To, he wanted to get something started there at the church, and, and it happened to boil down to celebrate recovery. And so he, uh, God kind of put that on our shoulders there, which is a blessing. I'm thankful for that. And we got tagged up with a brother who just got out and his wife, and uh, we're the team. A couple ex-inmates and a couple ladies that's praying us and loving us through some stuff and being a part of it. And we're seeing God work. A couple ladies just stopped by and said, we've seen the sign. We want to come in. And one of them is still coming, and we still have communication with the other one. So that's another story of God's mercy. And um, before long, I think we're going to get the opportunity to go back into the prison system, prison system and to share our story and our testimony in there. And, and amen. So not only, um, my nephew was going to be here tonight and was a good example for um, what God has done in my life because I've taught him a whole lot of bad. When he was younger, I snatched him up and put him under my wing uh, for the way of the world. And now I'm getting to show him the way to Christ. Uh, amen. But one of my biggest blessings outside of Jesus Christ, um, God allowed me to get married, amen. <laughs> and this stand up, babe, please. That's my wife, God has blessed me with. We met while I was in prison. Uh, we endured. Uh, about a month after I got out, we got married. And so, uh, and then uh, another blessing, we got six children, one of them here tonight, Skylar. Uh, we got a different kind of relationship. We pick on one another. That's how we show our love. We beat each other up. Amen. So, and all that, uh, God has set me free uh, from addiction that I tried to get away from. The blood of Christ has set me free. Amen. <laughs> it's all about Jesus. It ain't about me. I'm thankful for the opportunity. I, I thank Jesus so much. He is good. He set me free of something I couldn't set myself free of. Uh, I just thank God to be here, and that's all I got. Thank you for listening. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my dear friend and brother, Houston, and how you spoke through him to minister to our heart, to, for us to hear the mercies of God that was uh, poured out upon him every step of the way of his life. You were there. Even though he may have not recognized you, you revealed your, yourself to him, Father God, and he surrendered. And now, Father God, he is a witness. He has a testimony. He's telling everybody about his relationship with you. I pray that you will continue to use him to bring you glory and enrich his life each and every day. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Terry. <laughs> Microphone. Hey, man. One more thing. I knew I was going to forget something. If you have an uh, opportunity to come in and do prison ministry, uh, I went to every church service I could possibly go to after I gave my life to Christ. And the people that come in showed the love of Christ. Uh, just amazing. They helped me grow through Malachi Dads, through Celebrate Recovery, uh, through Bible study, through praying, coming in and praying, just walking in. And it shows us the love of Christ. You ain't even got to say nothing. If you get an opportunity to go inside the walls, prison system, or halfway house, I encourage you to do so because it's such a blessing to us. Not everybody, 
Not yeah. everybody got it yet, but then we continue to pray for them and lift them up. But if you do have that chance, it was such a blessing. Amen. And I never thought I'd be standing here right now. Amen. <laughs> but, yeah. Houston, I want to present this card, a thank you card from Safe Harbor Christian Church. Thanking you for coming and sharing your testimony. May you continue to allow God to speak through you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I need Dennis and I need Jesse. Would you please help me move this for me? All right. And can you take it over to the side? Praise the Lord. As we prepare for our next presenters, I would like to invite Nathan and Nia, along with uh, David, to come on stage here. Nathan and Nia are a young couple, and they're our next presenters. And David here is the father of Nathan, and he's going to pray them in. And before he does, celebrate recovery. Jean Esterly is the elder involved with Celebrate Recovery, and he has brought materials to City Church, helped to start Celebrate Recovery there. He started Celebrate Recovery at the Dismas Halfway House. Do I need to change this? Thank you, sweetie. Which one am, am I using? Okay. All right. And he started celebrating recovery at the Dismas Halfway House, and there are some other churches. I believe Houston uh, Jean has given you materials at your church to start Celebrate Recovery. You're working on it. It hasn't launched yet. May 10th, it'll be launched. So I want to let you know what you are doing here, Safe Harbor. Uh, through Celebrate Recovery, men are coming to the knowledge of truth to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You know, once they realize that they are powerless, powerless over whatever it is that's controlling their lives, and they surrender, that's the first step. And then it leads to a relationship with Jesus. So I thank you, Brother Gene, for the work that you're doing for the kingdom of God. You're going to pray them in and say whatever you want to say. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank our dear brother, uh, Houston. I appreciated that. It really encouraged us. And uh, I just see God's got great things for you. And uh, we just want to praise him. <laughs> to Brother TC, it's a privilege and an honor to be here, too, to worship with you. Really enjoyed the worship service so far. And, and uh, we just love to brag on God. That's what we're here to do. Amen. We're going to have you all to bow your heads as we want to just ask a blessing uh, over our dear children, Nia and Nathan. Our precious and kind and most wonderful Heavenly Father. Oh, Father, as we come together here tonight, Lord, it's just been so good so far just to be among your people and, Lord, to feel the movement of the Holy Spirit, God, that's in our hearts. But, Father, we want to pray a prayer blessing because Nate and Nia are a blessing. They're a blessing to us and to you. And Father dear, we want to pray, God, that you'll just continue to, to, again, allow your blessings to flow through them. Lord, the Bible tells us in the second chapter of the book of James that every good and precious, precious gift comes from you, Father, the Father of lights, where there is no variables nor shadows of turning. And God, we know that. And as we hear their testimony tonight, Father, we pray that, Lord, that you'll just be with them. Speak to our hearts. And Lord, we ask that you'll give us just receptive hearts to realize that, God, that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. We thank you for the Safe Harbor Church. We thank you for the missions that they're doing here in the work, Lord. And we just see the outreach. And Lord, we want to thank you for the, the church and the leadership of Brother T.C. and Sister Sherita. But God, tonight, this is about you. We come to praise you and to worship you for the great God that you are. And Lord, we have seen firsthand in our lives, me and Linda's lives, Lord, that you're still on the throne and that, Lord, that we, we believe in what we pray and we know that we have a God that hears. 
And Lord, we can tell, testify tonight of all this. But tonight we want to commend this to you. And we're going to ask your blessings, not only for today and the past, but also, Lord, in the future. And Lord, just to be honest, Lord, I don't know of a better pair of hands to be in than yours. Amen. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, David. Thank you. Love you back. David is the father of Nathan, and I'm going to ask Nathan to start us off and share and tell us how he met his beautiful bride, Nia. <laughs> one sec. Go to the other one, TC. We got, it's not on back here. It's not working. Hello. Sorry. Mine's wor is mine working? Yours is yes. Working. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello? As long as her mic works, we're good. She's the important one in this group. So, but we, uh, it's been 15 years now since we first met. We met in 2002 at a, another pastor, George Key. I don't know if you remember George yes. or not, but uh, we went to youth group together and we were at a youth function at his house and we just started talking and that's where we met. All right. Yeah, we were talking about on the way down here. I said, I remember that night, and I remember going home and waking up my mom and telling her about Nate. So it was definitely a, not necessarily love at first sight, but we, I knew there was something, something there. So it was an instant connection. Yes, yes. I knew, imme not immediately, but I just knew I, there was something special about Nate. And as I got to know him more and his family, I knew that he was a great catch. Wonderful. So yeah. how long, okay, when did you start officially dating? We started dating in the fall of 2002. Uh, it was my go, going into her year. senior year of high school. I, I was out of school a year. She had her senior year left to go. Yeah, we didn't go to the same high school. We went to different high schools. Right, right. Um, but it was, yeah, I was going into my senior year, and that, and that senior year is when we got, you know, really close. Yes. In my senior year of high school, um, Nate actually got to go with us. My brother got married in Hawaii. Um, the end of my senior year, Nate was, uh, got to go with our family, so we really did get close fast. You know, but I had wonderful parents, and um, they really got to know Nate and his family as well, and really, uh, we have grown. They grew to to love his family as well and they you know amen so. so after high school you had plans to go to college yes i did i went to um, ius um, here in new albany and i was actually um i had gone for a couple years and that's when the the cancer arrived and that's kind of what i can tell you about more but um do you want me to go into yes. that well what happened basically was all of a sudden, and it really did come on quickly, um, 